Usually, going outside to look at the stars is a fairly predictable experience. You know far in advance what objects will be visible, and every year the same planets and stars take their turn in the sky. But this past summer, Comet Neowise sped towards the Sun and became one of the brightest comets seen from Earth in over two decades. While the comet itself was interesting, I was a bit curious about the name. What did Neowise mean and who named it in the first place? And that really got me thinking about who named everything in space. Not just comets, but planets and stars. Well, it turns out to answer that question, we need to dig a little deeper than my original plan of a quick Google search. It helps to break the history of astronomy into three sections. Basically, it's everything before the telescope, after the telescope, and what we would consider to be the modern era, which would pretty much be the last hundred years or so. For the extent of human history, only the sun, moon, five planets, and about 3,000 stars have been visible. So naturally, we tried to name them, mainly after gods, deities, and other worthwhile figures from the regions doing the naming. So Jupiter was also known as Thor, Zeus, or even Marduk, depending on who you talk to. Today the planets are named after Roman gods, with the exceptions of Uranus, which was actually a Greek deity of the sky, and Earth, which comes from the word ground in Old English. During this time, constellations were also given names. While most followed the heroes and myth method, the stars within them began to be named by less creative methods, like brightness or position within their constellations. Take Rigel Cantaris, for example. Its name translates to the foot of the centaur. But the process of naming astronomical objects got turned on its head with the invention of the telescope in the 17th century. Suddenly hundreds of thousands of stars would become visible. We even find some missing planets within our own solar system. But the big question was, how are they going to think of that many names? While some objects like planets were special enough to keep the antiquated naming system, there were just too many stars to give each something distinct. Well, unless we came up with new gods, but that's beside the point, there needed to be a new system. Lots of different people tried their hand at unique naming patterns. Like at around the turn of the 20th century, the Henry Draper catalog was created. And it wasn't all that creative, they basically just numbered the stars. And our good friend, Rigel Cantaris, must have hit his teenage years, going by the hip new name HD128620. I mean, it just rolls off the tongue. But astronomer Johann Bayer had another idea. He decided that stars should be named after how bright they were and what constellation they were in. It seems like something we've heard before, right? But this time it was a little more scientific. Bayer would split a star's designation into two parts. First, a Greek letter, with the brightest star in the constellation being Alpha, then Beta, and so on, and the second part would be the constellation name. So our pal HD128620 got a new, new name, Alpha Centauri. But wait, Alpha Centauri is actually a star system with three stars in it. Well, there's an answer for that, Alpha Centauri A, B, and C. Easy. While stars are important, they aren't the only things we could see out of our telescopes. Comets began to be found regularly. Those were traditionally named after their discoverer, because who doesn't like naming things after themselves? Asteroids, or minor planets, began to be discovered in droves, all giving countless names, but none were standardized or easily enforceable. It was the Wild West up there. Large asteroids, Ceres, and Vesta were actually thought to be planets for a while and given names of Roman gods. Moons were also being found, receiving names related to the planets they revolve around. There were just too many names being thrown out. Everyone wanted to stake their claim, but the only way to become official was to get enough of the astronomical community calling the object your name. This proved to be hard since, you know, scientists aren't really known for socializing. It was clear that something needed to be done. In comes the International Astronomical Union. While it may have other functions, from organizing scientific meetings to advocating for astronomy around the world, the IAU is most famous for being the name gurus or the organization that releases all official astronomical names to the scientific community in an effort to standardize the process and avoid confusion. They came in and cleaned up the naming schemes associated with different astronomical objects. While things like the northern constellations were allowed to keep their Greek names, comets, for example, had to also include information about their discovery date, type of comet, and all that jazz. So comet Neowise is really C-2020 F3 Neowise. But what does that all mean? The C shows it's a non-periodic comet. It was discovered in 2020. And F3 means it was the third comet found in the second half of March. We just call it Comet Neowise for short. 
It was discovered using the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, or WISE, a space-based telescope, during a four-month-long mission extension referred to as NEOWISE, which is where the comet gets its name. Asteroids follow a few sets of rules. They have to keep the names short and avoid offensive language, which is unfortunate. That could have been pretty fun. But they're one of the few things that can still be named after people. So become friends with an astronomer, and maybe you can get an asteroid named after yourself. All official by the IAU and everything. Moons got pretty lucky too, keeping the traditional names for those discovered. But with planets like Jupiter, we just keep finding moons. So they've just resorted to numbers until they can be officially named. While the IAU has mostly had to deal with objects we already knew about before the space age, astronomy has exploded in knowledge in the last hundred years, presenting new naming challenges. When New Horizons flew by Pluto, we could suddenly see the surface of a world only a few pixels across before. Every large region obvious feature had to be named, similar to what the IAU had to do with Mars and Venus before it. The New Horizons team suggested a plethora of new names, and the IAU worked quickly to confirm names like Sputnik Planitia. At least for Pluto, they were naming precedents from previous objects. But in 2017, a strange thing happened. A new object was spotted in the night sky. It wasn't a comet or an asteroid. It was something entirely different. Oumuamua became the first interstellar object ever discovered. The IU had to come up with an entirely new naming structure. And so Oumuamua is now also known as 1i Oumuamua, the first interstellar object. Oumuamua itself was chosen by the discovery team and comes from the Hawaiian word for scout. And here we are back at stars. Until recently, most stars didn't have official names. But in the last few years, a subcommittee has been formed to officially name some of the brightest and most important stars in the sky. So what's that mean for our little friend Alpha Centauri? Well, now all three of its stars have official IAU-approved names instead of those long numbers. The brightest of the three has gone back to Rigel Cantaris. The second brightest is now Ptolemon, which is actually just another old name for Alpha Centauri. And the third one, since it was actually only discovered in 1915, or only a few years before the IAU was formed, has kept the same name its entire life, Proxima Centauri. Even with all this talk about the IAU, they do not hold a monopoly on the naming business. The goal of the IAU is to give public names for objects, particularly those that are popular. This finally brings us to those sites that claim they will let you name a star. We now know that the only organization that can officially name stars is the IAU, so none of those sites are official. But they technically follow the naming traditions held for the majority of human existence, just pointing at the sky and saying, hey, that star is now named Active Galactic, which is completely fine with us. If you can get your mom or sister to recognize it, you're halfway to being official. You can even print your own certificate, and it's just as official as anything online. And to think, I was just wondering where Neowise came from. <laughs>